I'm just going to talk to you about these waveforms I have captured on a Nissan Almira. It's a 2005 model N16. with a QG engine and it's got variable valve timing. The capture I'm looking at now at the moment is the MAF output doing a, a snap throttle test and uh, you can see where it goes very high here but I'm only getting about 3.69 volts here and the specs as far as I know, I don't have the actual Nissan specs, but for uh, it's a, uh, four volts seems to be a common uh, voltage that you would read uh, on a math sensor at, uh, doing a snap throttle test. Maybe the uh, electronic throttle control on the Nissan limits the uh, the maximum uh, uh, RPM on the engine. Next one I look at now is the. Um, uh, camshaft and the coil trigger and uh, as you can see this here is your coil trigger it goes up to about 4 volts and back down to zero and here's your number one timing mark on your camshaft and as you can see the way this is on our mirror is it's one pulse, three pulse, four pulses, two pulses, and then back to one, with the fire in the order of the car. So the other waveforms you should have. And also you can see then the uh, phase relationship between the two. Now this is a running car at idle. Uh, a car that obviously that's not start would not be uh, in a, a closed loop uh, situation. It would be in an open loop so that it wouldn't be as this. Here's the waveform for uh, the coil current. Um, this measurement is taken off the uh, 12 volt supply line going to the injector. I'm only measuring one injector, not the four all at once. Um, I looked at all four of them and they're all about the same as this. Um, one of them was about 7.5 amp and this one here maxes out about 8 amps. We start here over here at the left hand side and we see little oscillations here. This tells me we have uh, activity on the secondary side of the coil. That's a, that's a good sign. If this went up straight we would have uh, possibly shorter turns in the uh, primary side of the coil. And you see it ramps up slowly, it doesn't go straight up. And this here maxes out here at this line here, which is 8 amps. And then when the coil switches off, it goes straight down to zero very quickly. This is the uh, one of the uh, injector pulses, I think it was number one, um, I measured it on the uh, supply, the 12 volt supply line of the injector, I'm only measuring one injector not all four, and what we have here is, this is zero amps, then it gradually climbs, And then you see the pintle movement recorded in here. Pintle is pulled in, less current, and then go, it ramps up to about uh, 0.7 of an amp. 723 milliamps to be uh, exact, but about 0.7 of an amp. Then the injector shuts off. I can see a small bit of a hump on it here. It's not much. I'm just going to see, can I zoom in a little bit? If 
very little detail. But I see the makings of a small uh, little bit of a sharp rise. Whether it's a problem or not, uh, time will tell. I will keep an eye on it. This is the output from the uh, oxygen sensor. I took this reading directly off the oxygen sensor um, using the signal wire and the uh, signal uh, ground wire, which is the black is the signal and the grey is the ground. And we got a maximum voltage of 0.86. 0.88 millivolts, 0.8, nearly 0.9 volt, and a minimum uh, 0.17 of volt. And this was taken at uh, 2000 RPM. And uh, the switching time of this was below 100 milliseconds. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, the action sensor is only about uh, three months old. It, the car itself had uh, uh, an upstream and a downstream oxygen sensor and a new cat fit after the, uh, uh, its uh, annual testing. So I'm confident that it's pretty uh, right for this vehicle. This is the uh, signal to the variable valve uh, valve. It's a little valve that opens and lets oil into the variable valve uh, uh, system on, that's mounted on the cam shaft. And it comes in at high revs, it's not there all the time. Uh, I've tried it at different revs and the, uh, the duty cycle doesn't uh, change on, on it. Uh, maybe it does when you're bring it out on the road, under load, um, at normal operating uh, speeds and loads. But I couldn't get it to change uh, its duty cycle um, part uh, um, in, the, in the workshops. But it goes from um, uh, 12 volts, um, it's a, well, a pull down uh, type. You've got 12 volts on one side of the, uh, the solenoid valve and the other end goes to, back to the PCM and it's grounded through the PCM, sorry, the PCM. This is where the PCM grounds it and brings it down to zero volts. And it looks like it's on for about 40% of the time, roughly about 40% of the time. This is the pinouts of the MAF sensor. Uh, located in, in the engine compartment and as you look at the MAF sensor there is uh, six wires on this particular type and you have the white one the second one this one here is not connected we go up here the white lead then going to it is 12 volts and the black one then is ground next one up from that then is the signal this is where I took my uh, readings uh, for the snap throttle test. Two last ones here, I don't have to ask on it, but I would have uh, imagined they're, they're to do with the intake air temperature um, sensor inside the, uh, the MAF sensor itself. Stop. I hope them waveforms of the uh, engine sensors uh, will be of help as someone and this small diagram. Um, uh, thanks for watching.